Ferris Kim with RogueDeckBuilder.com here with match number two with RG Elf Ball. Yes, we'd like to play first. Uh, let's see if we can get a cool combination with Ogre Battlemaster again this game. This is a very risky hand, but we're going to be risky. And hopefully we don't just scoop to a Pillar of Flame or a Tragic Slip or anything that kills our, our first turn Accelerant. And Zogok, Mr. Zogok here, he decides to mulligan. And go down to a six. We are on the play, I do believe. Yes, so Stomping Grounds is going to come into play untapped. And yes, we'd like to pay two life. And yes, we'd like to put out an Arbor Elf. It's a little more versatile at this point. And next turn we have hopefully another land that we can draw into. So we can get a Visionary and a Mystic. Another Plains deck. Maybe we're going against humans again. It seems to be a very popular deck after Craig Wesco. Um... Burning Tree Emissary is definitely going to be the right play. And I do think that we are we are going to try to hit a land drop. So it's going to be Yellowish Visionary. And we do not hit that land drop. So we're in bad shape uh, against the white deck that is probably going to put out a thousand. Yep, it's going to be another one of these. Wow, this deck is getting incredibly popular. All right, so hopefully land, no land again. So I do believe the the right play is going to be the Zerta Druid, and we'll attack in here with these guys. So he takes three of the face, gets him down to a seventeen, and we at least can get out a Zerta Druid. And pass the turn back to him. I've got three available mana up next turn. And what is this? Going to be some sort of angel deck? Oh, Oblivion Ring. Taking out probably the Zerk. Why would he do it against the Arbor Elf? Because uh, I am an Elf deck, I guess. But that's fine. It's not that big of a deal. It does take out a mana producer. I get a Gavany Township. At this point, isn't going to do much. Anything for three, I can cast no... So I'm just going to attack in here. Well, let's go ahead and do this right now for an Elvish Mystic. And swing in for these two. And he takes a three. So off to a bit of a slow start. The cool thing about this deck is it's unlike other aggro decks. Late game, it can just start going crazy. Lingering Souls... Isn't the biggest issue. He can chump block the Burning Tramacer if he wants. I probably won't run an Elvish Visionary into it. And speaking of Elvish Visionaries. We'll throw one out. To try to draw a card. Hopefully a land. An Arbor Elf. Ugh. Alright. Well. We'll attack in here with the Burning Tramacer. If he wants to chump two spirit tokens in it, in the way he can. Okay, that's that's a trade I am definitely willing to make. And we'll throw out Arbor Elf. And see what type of play he has. So, still confused with what this deck is. With the Serums, he's got a bunch of angels. So, it's going to be a green or white where did I get green from a white black red angel deck maybe with Aurelia I'm not sure maybe he stabilizes until he tries to get out a huge angel but he's having land issues too and we are now in group color of I could just go for an ogre battle driver to try to win it or a Yeva's Naked Herald no nah, it's definitely going to be a group here do I have enough? One, two, three, four, five, six. I do have enough. So green, green. And this you may put a green creature card from your hand on the battlefield. Of course, that's not the right move. And we get to see the power of Groot, Caller of Beast. Hopefully it hits. Now I'm going to find it's going to be reveal the top five lands of my library. Watch, since I haven't hit into many, many lands here. So Groot, Caller of Beast is going to come out. He's in terrible shape now. He's going to have a hard time coming back from this. And he just does scoop. Just for the sake of it, let's look what we would have drawn into. 
One, two, three, four, five. We'd have a Gyre Sage, an Alfson Pilgrim, and an Arbor Elf. And the next turn off the next five. So we'd had we had had three cards out of that. And the next we had an Alfson Pilgrim. Alfson Pilgrim and Soul of the Harvest. So Grook is a pretty boss card. Um, of course, it would have drawn some cards here. So maybe I wouldn't have had that many cards out of it if I would have drawn into a land or a creature if I did not draw into land. All right, anyway, I'll quit rambling here. We'll go on to the sideboard. Um, I don't know if I need to fight anything, so I don't know if I need to bring in the Predator Ooze Domri Raid package. I'm also thinking about putting Rancors in instead of the Ranger's Guile as going more of a beatdown with that. I don't know. This sideboard is definitely something I need to work out. Uh, I made this deck pretty quickly. I'm thinking that I need some Rootbound, or uh, not Rootbound Crags, but some of the... Some of the green-white, what are they called? Sun Petal Groves? I'm really liking this Zerta Druid, though. I wish we could add for red. I have no clue why they didn't allow it to add for red as well. Kind of disappointed in that. Anyhow, I don't think there's any changes I really need to make. I like this how it is. I don't need to stabilize with Thragtus. Uh, we could put in an Elder Scale Worm, and it could just be... But he has ways to get rid of, like, Oblivion Ring. And we could have put in the Ranger's Guiles for the Oblivion Ring, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. So I'm going to submit it how it is. Maybe Predator's is good. Predator's is good against any mid-range or aggro deck as it's just a roadblock. Uh, kind of a slow hand, very slow hand, but we're on the draw. We have a good likelihood that we draw into any sort of mana producing card and we can cast any one of them. So it's going to be a scroll to Avacyn that he starts off with. And the Gavany Township is fine. It's, gonna, it's just going to be a Temple Garden. And again, hopefully I can somehow get back to this game. I'm thinking he's going to have like a uh, trading post as well. Kind of a funny deck that I'm playing against. I don't know how refined it is. It's a rogue deck though, so I'm glad to see it. And this is in a two-man queue, of course, so there's a, there, are, there is a pack on the line. At this point, I'm thinking the Elvish Mystic is actually better than a Sage. Other than, yeah, because we'd have to figure out a way to get a counter on a Sage before we could activate it. Uh, so I think I'm just going to put this Temple Garden into play tapped, and the Mystic is a little more powerful. Sad that the Gyre Sage works that way, uh, as it has to get evolve, evolve before it can start producing mana. Almost wish this was a 0-1, as it would get evolved right off the bat, and then you can start tapping it for mana but the sage is a lot of times used as beat down it gets huge in certain decks in my deck not so much but the sage is you got to ignore this one two body because it becomes huge i've seen this guy up to like a five six before with no problem uh at this point again slow start what we're going to do is we're going to attack in with elvish mystic and he takes a one and we're going to play another temple garden into play tapped and Go for a Sage. Now, if he can't beat this draw, I don't know what he can beat. Uh, again, uh, he might he's probably going to be some sort of Aurelia build. Angelica Chord, being your upkeep, you've gained... Okay, this is exactly what he's going he's trying to do. So it's an, it's an Angelica Chord uh, gain life deck. Not too shabby, not too shabby at all. Kind of a cool deck if he does end up gaining four life per turn and, and just overwhelming me with tokens. But I'm a very aggressive strategy myself. Ugh, this is just getting awkward. So I think what we're going to do is just start putting counters on my dude so I can start tapping my Sage for mana. And next turn, we can call, group Caller of the Pride, or we can Soul of the Harvest. War Leader's Helix away at the Sage. Yeah, that does suck. And he does, he is able to get a, a... There we go. That's a cool combination. But again, are we in range anyway of 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6? We are... Oh, man. So decisions, decisions. I can either go the Soul of the Harvest... Or we can just Garouk and just try to get some card advantage here. I have no way to protect Garouk against a... a but I'm going to be plussing him anyway. I mean, I could minus him to put the Soul of the Harvest out. 
But it's it's gonna be Garouk here. And we are gonna reveal the top five cards of my library. And hopefully put a lot of creatures in. Or, or reveal a lot of creatures. Awesome. We get four creatures. That is how powerful this group Call of the Pride is. And he still has to figure a way to kill it. And we can get rid of this forest now. And he's going to be able to sack the Scroll of Avacyn to put a, another Angelic Cord. Yeah, so I'm going to have definitely a lot of tokens staring me down. But, I, again, like I said, with this deck, it's not a traditional aggro deck. I just I get to the point where I just win. Especially if I'm going to get another trigger off of Groot Caller. Archangel of Thune. Okay. So his guys are going to get pretty big. But in step, you gain four more life. He didn't gain four more life. Oh, he didn't sack a scroll to Avacyn. What did he do? He served sanctuary to Angel Thune. He decided to go with the Angel Thune instead. All right, that's fine. Definitely fine. There's a rootbound crag. I actually really like that. Might as well activate Garouk here. See how many creatures we get. And it's going to be the Ogre Battlemaster. Because that way everything begins to have haste. And actually, we want to save as much green mana as possible, I do believe. So Ogre Battle Driver. And we can just start going crazy with with uh, creatures here. So Mystic gets a Mystic, which then gets a Pilgrim. So we're gonna go a burning a burning tramissary, and that's actually gonna be then one more pilgrim, and then we're out of ammo actually. And maybe I should have waited for this for the soul of the harvester. And may, yeah, maybe I actually will wait next turn as we get we'll get creature activations. I mean, we'll get activations of the soul of the harvest. So maybe I do wait as everything does have haste uh, for next turn, and then just try to go crazy with that. Yeah, because we need to hit into a Primal Surge. I'm going to take some massive damage here, though. With the Angel Archangel Thune. In fact, I might just die here. Because, yeah. If he can do somehow do 20 damage, which I wouldn't be surprised if he can. Like a War Leader Helix to the face. Trading Post. Yep, I knew this was a Trading Post deck was going to be in here. So a really cool deck. I really like it. Shadow to Zogok. It's a cool deck. I just don't know how competitive it is. Oh, geez. <laughs> it's quite competitive with the amount of triggers it can get. I have to kill him next turn. I imagine he's going to attack Grook. Why didn't he attack the Archangel of Thune? He wants to leave stuff back. So Grook bites the dust. I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm one turn. He can just kill me in one turn. Jeez. And he gains life. Puts on some stuff. Whew, that is That is pretty crazy. Uh, so I'm dead next turn unless I can go that Primal Surge and just, just win. And I don't know if I have the mana to do so. So let's see here. Uh, uh, gladly for another Forest. What we need to do is... Ugh. Let's see here. Sure, that's fine like this for the Soul of the Harvest. Yeah, I don't even know at this point if I, I can even... I have to draw into an Elvish Archdruid. Druid. 
to somehow get us out of this. There's our Elvis, Elvis Arch Druid. So that's very good. Still don't know if uh, that's going to do anything here. Arbor Elf. Arbor Elf is definitely good. At this point, I do think I just burning Tramissary. Other than it does draw me a card. I think I just, I actually just Arbor Elf here. So that's actually really good that I can tap this for five. Another Elvish Arch Druid. Garouk. I don't know if Garouk is actually the right play at this point. It costs a lot. We would have to draw... Yeah, I don't think a Crater Hoof would actually generate us enough mana. So I'm going to have to just try... Let's see, we're going to untap. A Temple Garden. Tap a Mystic. So we're going to... Ooh, wait, I have Floating Mana, so we don't need to do that, actually. I have two Floating Mana, so we can actually Burning Tramissary here. To try to draw into something else. Elvis Arch Druid again, so that's great. At this point, I've got tons of mana. Stomping Ground. All right, so we'll tap an Elvish Arch Druid for Garouk, plus him. <laughs> Grab a ton of stuff. All right, that's cool. With the floating mana, we will cast an Arbor Elf. Rootbound Crag, so we're stuck again. See, we can tab an Elvish Arch Druid for eight. Or wait, can we get anything else out? No, that's the best. We'll tap for eight for a, another Elvish Arch Druid. Ugh, okay, so for an Arbor Elf and a Burning Tramissary. For Visionary, draws me a Burning Tramissary. Okay, still nothing. Still no Primal Surge or the Crater of Behemoth. So we will cast it. Village Bell Ring, of course, would be amazing in this. Um, sure, we'll cast an Elvis Mystic. And get another Visionary. Still no Primal Surge or, oh, this is just awful. Well, we can do a Absent Pilgrim. And there's Primal Surge. So that should be game. We will be able to tap this for 13 mana. There's the Primal Surge. And he should just scoop here. Yes, we'd like to place it on the battlefield. Yes, we'd like to put this on the battlefield. Yes, we'd like to put this on the battlefield. Yes, we'd like to put this on the battlefield. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. Where is Crater of Behemoth? No. Yes. Yes, yes, and yes, yes. Uh, so let's stop, remove auto yields. Okay, 
And I don't think there's anything that can get him out of this at this point. Now we just got to stack everything. So we're going to remove these. As, we're going to put always say no. Oh, lag. And I don't know why he's making me go through this. Okay, okay so an always, always yield to the battle driver trigger. Okay. Get rid of this little box here. I hate this thing. I, I still can't figure out how to get rid of that thing. And always no to this. And always yield to this. Okay, that should solve those triggers. Why is it still saying, okay, okay, just going to make me say okay to all these things. Okay, okay, okay. And you can scoop at any time, my friend. Declare attackers. And away we swing. And there's nothing you can do. Thanks for wasting all of our time. But you get to see how much damage this is. Swing away. Now watch him have like some sort of fog effect. Alrighty, so see how he blocks it. No blockers, and he is down to, oh, it doesn't even show us the negative, negative whatever he was down to. Very, 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 very fun deck. Uh, <laughs> and it works pretty well. This is Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching.